Welcome to Metro's pre-trip inspection for bus operator trainees. Today I'm going to show you a complete pre-pullout safety inspection for Metro buses. The pre-trip inspection consists of several sections. You can start the procedure at any section you prefer, but it is highly recommended that you start with the air brake test. So let's begin. One of the most important tasks you must complete each day is inspecting the bus prior to operating it. This is to promote the safety of our bus operators and our passengers. Pre-trip bus inspections must be performed to ensure the bus is safe to drive, reliable, and dependable. The pre-trip inspection must be unconditionally accomplished to be in compliance with state and federal laws and Metro's rules and SOPs. Also, a vehicle condition report must be completed by documenting the overall status of the bus. In this video, we will demonstrate the most efficient method to complete the pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip inspection begins as you approach the bus. Making a visual assessment on the general condition of the bus starting from the top to the bottom. Let's perform a safe start. To begin, use three points of contact to enter the bus. Position yourself in the driver's seat. Press firmly on the service brake. Confirm that the parking brake is set. Turn the master switch to day run, gear shift to neutral, and start the bus. The alternator light or battery icon should turn off, then listen for any unusual sounds. If equipped, check the analog braking system indicator. It should come on, then off. Turn the master switch to night run position. This action activates the clearance, dash, and tail lights. Turn on the high beams and identify that the indicator light on the dash is on. Activate the fast idle switch to build up the air pressure. Turn on the four-way flashers or hazard lights, turn on the interior lights, and activate the rear door interlock. This action activates the brake lights. Let's continue with the brake test. The air brake test consists of 10 steps that must be completed and passed successfully before driving the bus out of the yard. The 10 steps to be performed are air governor cut out, air governor cut in, air pressure buildup, applied air leakage, static air leakage, low air pressure warning signal, emergency spring brake, rear door interlock, parking brake, and service brake. Air Governor Cutout. This test is to verify that the air governor stops building air pressure at a maximum of 140 pounds per square inch. Before starting the test, if the engine is off, perform a safe start. If the engine is already running, lower the air pressure to 90 PSI. Remember to identify which needle or gauge you are going to use for the test. With the parking brake activated, transmission in neutral and foot over the service brake, lower the air pressure to 90 PSI by repeatedly pressing down on the service brake. Apply one third throttle or fast idle to build up the air pressure. On the new Flyer Excelsior buses, you might need to use the fast idle because the throttle initially might not work. Watch the needle on the air pressure gauge move to the right and stop, not exceeding 140 PSI. Identify where the air governor cuts out. In this video, the air governor cuts out at 120 PSI. This is a good test. Air governor cut in. This test is to verify that the air governor starts building air pressure at a minimum of 85 PSI. With the parking brake activated, transmission in neutral, engine running, and the air pressure at cutout level, apply the service brake one time and wait 5 to 10 seconds for the needle to move to the right. If the needle doesn't move to the right, repeat this process as many times as needed without going past the minimum range of 85 PSI. Identify your results. In this video, the air governor cuts in at 98 PSI. This is a good test. 
air pressure buildup. This test is to verify that the air compressor can safely refill the system. With the parking brake activated, transmission in neutral, and the engine running, lower the air pressure to 85 psi by applying the service brake repeatedly. Air pressure should build up from 85 PSI to 100 PSI within 45 seconds. Identify your results. In this video, the air pressure built up from 85 to 100 PSI in 30 seconds. This is a good test. Applied air leakage. This test is to verify that the brake system has no air leakage. Make certain to build up the air pressure to cut out before starting the test. With the air pressure fully charged, shut off the engine and turn the master switch to day run. This action powers the gauges and electronics. Apply and hold the service brake. Release the parking brake. Wait for the needle to stop moving or stabilize before timing. You can use your watch or the clock on the ATMS screen to time the procedure. Observe the needle for one minute. The needle should not move to the left more than 3 psi in one minute. Identify any air loss. In this test, the air pressure indicated no air loss. This is a good test. Continue to the next test with the engine off and the master switch on day run. Static air leakage. This test is to verify the brake system has no air leaks. Remember, this test must be performed on level ground or with the use of wheel chocks. With the air pressure at operating range, parking brake released, engine off, and the master switch on day run. Slowly release the service brake and wait for the needle to stop moving or stabilize before timing. You can use your watch or the clock on the ATMS screen to time the procedure. Observe the needle for one minute. Needle should not move to the left more than 2 psi in one minute. Identify any air loss. If the bus rolls while performing the test, apply the service brake firmly and inform the instructor that the test cannot be performed because the bus is not on level ground. If the air pressure does not indicate a considerable air loss of more than 2 psi, continue on to the next test with the engine off and the master switch on day run. Low air pressure warning signal. This test is to verify that the low air warning light and or audible alarm will activate. With the parking brake release, engine off and master switch on day run. Apply the service brake repeatedly until the lower warning light and or audible alarm comes on. The warning alarm should activate no lower than 55 PSI. Identify when the alarm activated. In this video, the lower warning alarm activated at 70 PSI. 
this is a good test. Continue on to the next test with the engine off and the master switch on day run. Emergency spring brake. This test is to verify the emergency spring brake will pop up in the event of an air leak. With the parking brake released, engine off, master switch on day run, apply the service brake repeatedly to lower the air pressure. The spring brake should pop up at a minimum of 40 psi. Identify when the pop up occurs. In this video, the emergency spring brake activated at 50 psi. This is a good test. After completing this test, cover the service brake, confirm that the transmission is in neutral and start the engine. Make certain to build up the air pressure to cut out before starting the test. Rear door interlock. This test is to verify the rear door interlock is functioning properly. In the following test, you will be placing the transmission in drive, so remember to put on your seatbelt. Rear door interlock test. Press firmly on the service brake. Activate rear door interlock. Place transmission in drive and release the parking brake. Slowly release the service brake and tap the accelerator. Bus should have no power to accelerate or move. This is a good test. After completing this test, press firmly on the service brake. Activate the parking brake and deactivate the rear door interlock. If the system does not indicate a considerable air loss, continue on to the next test. Parking brake. This test is to verify that the parking brake will prevent the bus from moving while in gear. With your seatbelt on, engine running, transmission in gear and parking brake activated. Slowly release the service brake and lightly apply the accelerator. Engine should accelerate and the bus should not move. This is a good test. Remember, if the engine does not accelerate, firmly apply the service brake one time and repeat the procedure. After completing this test, secure the bus by firmly applying the service brake and placing the transmission in neutral. Service brake. This test is to verify that the service brake works properly. Firmly apply the service brake. Place transmission in drive and release the parking brake. Confirm that the surrounding area is clear. Slowly release the service brake and accelerate no faster than 5 miles per hour. Make a normal application of the service brake. Bus should stop and steering wheel should not pull to the left or right. This is a good test. After completing this test, remember to secure the bus by placing transmission in neutral and activating the parking brake. You have just completed the air brake test. Let's continue with the interior inspection, starting with the driver's compartment area. Driver's seat, inspect all adjustments are operational. Seatbelt should be clean, secure, and adjustable. Steering wheel adjustments should be operational. Check for excessive play. There should be no more than 2 inches of play for a 20 inch steering wheel or 10% of any diameter steering wheel. Check the horn. Driver's floor should be clear of hazards and has no trash or debris. Pedals should have proper tread and not loose. Inspect the turn signal switch and that the corresponding light on the dash illuminates. Left turn signal. Right turn signal, high beams, low beams, and four-way flashers.
inspect the left side control panel. All toggle switches should be mounted securely, operates in all positions and are clearly labeled. Check that the air conditioning and heating system is functioning properly. Remember to leave the stop request chime switch in the on position. Interior lights should be working in all positions. Parking brake knob is mounted securely and four-way flashers are operational. Master switch and front door air release should be operational. Check that the door control lever operates properly in all settings. The rear door interlock should engage. Apply the service brake and check that the gear shift selector is operational in all gears and kept in neutral when not engaged. If the gear shift selector is flashing, the gear is not engaged. Firmly reapply the service brake Place the transmission in neutral and then press the button for the desired gear. Inspect the gauges. Glass should be clean and not damaged. If equipped, voltmeter should indicate proper charge level. The windshield wiper and washer should be functioning properly. Warning or diagnostic light should be operational. Make certain that the heater and defroster system operates in all settings. Inspect the kneeling feature and deploy the ramp. Inspect the ramp for leaks and loose or missing parts. Check the overhead, the ATMS and handset, gas leak detection system, destination sign control panel, stop request sign, smart drive camera and fare box all have power and operational. Sun visor should be mounted securely and in good working condition. Check that the driver's window opens and closes smoothly. Inspect the fire extinguisher. It should have an ABC rating and properly charged. Hoses and nozzle are not damaged. Pin and seal are secure. Expiration tags should be present. Identify the location of the emergency triangles. There should be three triangles, not leaking sand and not damaged. Mirrors are present, not cracked, properly adjusted. Brackets and arms secure and not damaged. Inspect the front doors. Step lights should be working. Door hinges are mounted securely. Windows should be clean, not damaged, and secure with a rubber seal. Grab rails are mounted securely and weather seal present. Passenger entry steps should be clear of debris and the floor area is not showing signs of excessive wear. Inspect emergency exits. Door dump valve, windows, and ceiling hatches are not damaged and clearly labeled with operating instructions. Open an emergency exit window to demonstrate that it operates properly. Check that all interior compartment doors latches securely. Handrails, stanchions, and straps are mounted securely and not loose. Air vents should be secured and clear of debris. Advertisement signs are not hanging or loose. Interior lights are operational. Windows are secure, not cracked or damaged. Stop request cable or button is functioning Stop properly. Please use rear exit. Your safety watch your step when exiting the bus. The stop request only works if the doors are closed. It will automatically reset after opening and then closing the doors. Check that all the seats are firmly attached to the bus and not damaged or soiled. The floor should be clear of debris and not showing signs of excessive wear. Interior step well should be properly labeled. Inspect the rear doors. Step lights should be working. 
Door hinges are mounted securely. Windows should be clean, not damaged, and secured with a rubber seal. Grab rails are mounted securely and weather seal present. Exit areas should be free of hazards. Check the wheelchair securement area. Priority seating decals should be present on both sides. The area should be free of hazards. Stop request buttons should be working and properly labeled. Foldable seats, tie downs, lap and shoulder belts should be clean and operational. Before concluding the interior inspection, it is recommended that you ask the instructor for assistance in checking the exterior lights. Starting with the front clearance lights, left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way flashers, high beam and low beam. Continue with the rear exterior lights, starting with the rear clearance lights. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way flashers. and brake lights. You have just completed the interior inspection. It is suggested that you begin the exterior inspection from the front side of the bus, starting from the top to the bottom, and continue in a clockwise direction. Clearance lights, clean and working, lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Destination head sign, clean, working, not damaged, and secured by a rubber molding. Windshield, not cracked or broken. Free of obstructions, no illegal stickers, and secured with a rubber seal. Wiper arms has good tension, and wiper blades are pliable and not brittle or cracked. Check the washer fluid reservoir for proper fluid level. Bike rack is operational and secured to the bus. License plate is clean, legible, and mounted securely. Turn signals and four-way flashers are clean and working. Lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Headlamps are clean and working. Lens cover clear in color, not broken or missing. Bumper is in good condition and secured to the bus. Check under the bus. There should be no leaks or puddles and no loose or hanging wires. The bus is level and not leaning to the left or right. Check the clearance light and reflector. Clean and working, lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Right side flat and convex mirrors are clean and not cracked or loose. Mirror bracket and arm are mounted securely, not damaged and adjustable. Front door glass should be clean, not cracked or broken, and secured with rubber seals. Door handles are mounted securely. Turn signals are clean and working. Lens cover, amber in color, and not broken or missing. Curb light should be operational. Splash guard and mud flap are mounted securely, not damaged and not touching the tire or the ground. When checking the front tires, remember to identify the inflation, condition, and depth. Proper inflation for all tires is best checked with a tire gauge. Let's check the tire condition. Front tire must show even tread wear, no recaps or regrooves, no air leaks and no bulges or cuts. Sidewall should have no abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Front tire tread depth must be a minimum of 4 30 seconds of an inch. Rim is not cracked, dented, or damaged, and no signs of welding repair. Lug nuts are all present, no rust trails around the bolts, and no cracks at the bolt holes. Hub oil seal is not leaking oil or grease, and bolts are not loose or missing. 
If sight glass is present, check for proper fluid level. Valve stem cap is present and valve stem is not damaged and not leaking air. Let's check the brake and suspension components. Although these items are not readily visible, DMV requirement mandates that a CDL holder must identify and know how to inspect components of the brake and suspension system. Let's start with the brake system components. There are two types being utilized for Mitchell's bus fleet. The brake drum setup can be found on the older new flyer and the knobby 40-foot buses. The knobby 45-foot bus, the knobby 60-foot articulated bus, and the new flyer 40-foot Excelsior bus are all equipped with the disc brake setup. Brake system components. Identify the four Bs. Brake chamber, brake hoses and lines, brake lining or disc pads, brake drum or rotors. Brake chamber. Check that the brake chamber is mounted securely, not cracked, not dented, and not leaking air. C-clamp is not loose or missing. Brake hoses and lines. Check that the brake hoses and lines are not worn, cracked, or frayed, while couplings and fittings are secure and not leaking. Brake lining or disc pad. Check that the brake lining or disc pad is not worn dangerously thin and has no contaminants such as oil or grease. Brake drum or rotor. Check that the brake drum or rotor has no holes, not cracked, not dented, and has no loose or missing bolts. Brake and suspension components. Identify the three S's, the slack adjuster, shocks, and suspension. Slack adjuster and push rod. Check that the slack adjuster and push rod are mounted securely, not bent, broken or loose and has no missing parts. If the brakes were released and pulled by hand, the push rod should not move more than approximately one inch. Shocks. Check that the shocks are mounted securely, not damaged and not leaking. Suspension. The airbag is not damaged and has no leaks. Airbag mount is not damaged and bolts are in place. U-bolts are not broken, not loose, and has no missing bolts. Continue with the exterior inspection of the bus. Side destination sign is operational and not damaged. Windows are secure, not cracked or broken, and no graffiti or illegal stickers. The side of the bus has no major body damage. Clearance light and reflector. Clean and working, lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Rear doors are secure on the hinges, glass is clean, not damaged and secured by a rubber molding. Splash guard, mud flap and S1 guard are mounted securely, not damaged and not touching the tire or the ground. When checking the rear dual tires, remember to identify the inflation, condition and depth. Proper inflation for all tires is best checked with a tire gauge. Let's check the tire condition. Rear dual tires must show even tread wear. Recaps or regrooves are allowed. No air leaks and no bulges or cuts. Bud spacing is evenly spaced and clear of debris or obstructions. Sidewalls should have no abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Tread depth for the rear dual tires must be at a minimum of 2 30 seconds of an inch. Rim is not cracked, dented, or damaged, and no signs of welding repair. Lug nuts are all present. No rust trails around the bolts and no cracks at the bolt holes. Axle seal is not leaking oil or grease, and bolts are not loose or missing. Valve stem cap is present and valve stem is not damaged and not leaking air. The rear brake and suspension components. Remember, these items are not readily visible, but it is imperative that you know how to identify and inspect components of the rear brake and suspension system. 
Brake system components. Identify the four Bs. Brake chamber, brake hoses and lines, brake lining or disc pads, brake drum or rotors. Brake chamber. Check that the brake chamber is mounted securely, not cracked, not dented, and not leaking air. Seat clamp is not loose or missing. Brake hoses and lines. Check that the brake hoses and lines are not worn, cracked, or frayed. All couplings and fittings are secure and not leaking. Brake lining or disc pad. Check that the brake lining or disc pad is not worn dangerously thin and has no contaminants such as oil or grease. Brake drum or rotor. Check that the brake drum or rotor has no holes, not cracked, not dented, and has no loose or missing bolts. Brake and suspension components. Identify the three S's. The slack adjuster, shocks, and suspension. Slack adjuster and push rod. Check that the slack adjuster and push rod are mounted securely, not bent, broken, or loose, and has no missing parts. If the brakes were released and pulled by hand, the push rod should not move more than approximately one inch. Shocks. Check that the shocks are mounted securely, not damaged, and not leaking. Suspension. The airbag is not damaged and has no leaks. Airbag mount is not damaged and bolts are in place. U-bolts are not broken, not loose, and has no missing bolts. Continue with the exterior inspection of the bus. Turn signals and four-way flashers are clean and working. Lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Battery compartment door and all other compartment doors are not damaged and latches securely. Check the rear clearance light and reflector. It should be clean and working. Lens cover red in color, not broken or missing. Air vents are not damaged and clear of debris. Inspect the fuel compartment. Fuel cap is present, gauge is operational, and shutoff valve is accessible. Overhead fuel tank compartment should be secure and not leaky. Let's check the rear of the bus. Clearance lights. Clean and working, lens cover red in color, not broken or missing. Rear destination sign is operational and not damaged. Air vents are not damaged and clear of debris. Inspect the tail lights and brake lights. Clean and working, lens cover red in color, not broken or missing. Turn signals and four-way flashers are clean and working. Lens cover amber in color, not broken or missing. Reverse lights should be operational. Rear license plate is clean, legible, and mounted securely. License plate light should be operational. Bumper is in good condition and secured to the bus. Check under the rear of the bus. There should be no leaks or puddles, and no loose or hanging wires. Let's check the engine compartment. Engine compartment doors should open and close smoothly. Door hinges are not damaged and latches securely. Identify the gauges, wires, hoses, and belts. The engine temperature, oil pressure, and voltmeter gauges are to be checked with the engine running. All gauges should be mounted securely, not cracked or broken, and displace proper operating range. After inspecting the gauges, turn off the engine from the rear control panel. Wires should be securely fastened, properly insulated, and not touching the engine components. Hoses are not worn, cracked, or frayed, and not leaking. Make certain that the engine is off when checking the belts. Belts should not be worn, cracked, or frayed. There should be no more than three quarters of an inch of free play. Inspect the exhaust pipe and engine frame. Exhaust assembly should be mounted securely, not damaged, not leaking carbon or soot. Exhaust pipe should not have excessive smoke or noise. Engine frame is not damaged. No broken welds on the cross members and all bolts are present. Don't forget to mention the drive shaft. The drive shaft should not be bent, cracked, or twisted, and the U-joints should be secure and free of foreign objects. Let's inspect the engine components. 
There are two types of engines being utilized for Metro's bus fleet. Most of the buses are equipped with the Cummings engine and a few older buses are equipped with the Series 50's engines. Identify the four components of the engine and the four fluids. Water pump, 24 volt alternator, power steering pump, and air compressor. Engine oil, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, coolant fluid. Water pump, mounted securely and not leaking, valve driven on the Cummings engine, or gear driven on the Series 50's engine. Alternator, mounted securely and all wires securely fastened, valve driven on both engines. Power steering pump, mounted securely and not leaking, gear driven on both engines. Air compressor, mounted securely and not leaking, gear driven on both engines. Engine oil, must be checked with the engine off. Pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, and put it back in place. Pull the dipstick out again and check the fluid level. It should be between the high and low marks. Transmission fluid. Must be checked with the engine on. Pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, and put it back in place. Pull the dipstick out again and check the fluid level. It should be between the high and low marks. Power steering fluid. To be checked using the sight glass. Fluid is red in color and should be at the proper level. Coolant fluid. To be checked using the sight glass. Fluid is green in color and should be at the proper level. Let's continue with the exterior inspection on the left side of the bus. Check all other items on the left side of the bus in the same manner as the right side. Identify the location of the fuse box. If accessible, it should have spare fuses. All connections are secure and the fuse compartment door latches securely. Steering box, hoses, and steering linkage. Although these items are not readily visible, it is important that you know how to identify and inspect the components of the steering box, hoses, and steering linkage. Steering box and hoses. The steering box should be mounted securely and not leaking. There should be no missing nuts and bolts. Check the power steering hoses for leaks and damage. Steering linkage. Steering linkage arms and rods are not worn or cracked. Steering joints and sockets should not be worn or loose. There should be no loose or missing nuts, bolts, or cotter pins. Congratulations! You have just completed the pre-trip inspection. It is highly suggested that you watch this video as many times as necessary and review the study guide. Good luck! And remember, Safety always comes first.